بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلا علی وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد ای اللہ باب I wanted to take out a minute and this is the 16th uh, lesson or sitting in the Kitab Shara Sunnah by Imam Baba Hari Rahimahullah Ta'ala to mention a few athar or narrations on the Salaf of this Ummah Rahimahullah Jami'an dealing with the importance of being aware about Ahl Bid'ah and avoiding Ahl Bid'ah and the danger of falling into Bid'ah and how the Salaf used to see Bid'ah. And this is directly relevant to the past few lessons that we had where Imam Baba Hari, in fact the whole beginning of the treatise and in fact the whole treatise really deals a lot with the, the um, position of Ahl Sunnah with regards to Ahl Bid'ah and important aspects of creed of what the sound Islamic creed is clarifying it and mentioning some of the biggest signs of the people who deviated from the sound Islamic creed from Ahl Bid'ah that were well known during the time of the author of the treatise, Imam Baba Hari, who died in 329 Hijri, as we mentioned. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And some of the narrations I wanted to mention, I just wanted to mention a, a handful, possibly five or six narrations six narrations, possibly seven, uh, from the ethod of the Salaf from the thousands. In fact, we don't say hundreds, but we can say thousands of narrations of how the Salaf of this Ummah dealt with Bid'ah. So don't fall into the trap of those people who say there's a Bid'ah Hasana. When in fact, when you go back to the books, when we look at the, the, the Nusus first and foremost of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we see that the Prophet والسلام, warned very sternly against bid'ah. This is why we uh, emphasize these 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 uh, principles, the principles of Ahl Sunnah, the correct way, and mention the falsehood of the people of falsehood, because the Prophet والسلام, himself, Salawatu Rabbi Wasallamu Alaihi, mentioned the danger of bid'ah and mentioned the danger of the people of of bid'ah from the Khawarij from the Qadriya and uh, the many of the other Jama'at and sects fall under general narrations and general warnings in their going astray because their bid'ah was not known until later. And this should give us an idea of why we speak often about innovation because in fact this is a way of preserving the religion. And it's also a way of making the correct creed known and correct methodology for Dawa related to the religion to make it known and clear and to show what is the opposite of that and what has no place in that and what poses a danger and threat and weakens the fabric of the methodology of propagating Islam and what opposes the correct creed and aqidah. So this is one of the some of the reasons why we warn against bid'ah and why you find Ahl Sunnah all throughout time making it an asul and in fact they don't make it an asul but it is an asul of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah but this usul comes from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the hef or the encouragement to preserve the religion and it also falls under as we've said before 
the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he said, Min ra'a minkum munkran, whoever sees a munkar, fali ghayra will be yid. Then change it with his hand until the rest of the narration. And if he's unable to do, then change it with his uh, change it with his tongue. And if he's unable to do, so then changing it with his heart. And that's the weakest form of Iman, and that's in Sahih Muslim. Ayyul Ahbab, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless you and forgive us and forgive you and guide us and guide you. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. That this should be no mystery to us then why we speak against innovation and that the Salaf, why they uh, had so many narrations because they were preserving the religion and they were commanding the good and the forbidden, e forbidding the evil uh, amongst the many other reasons for warning against innovation and in fact as one of the ulama mentioned to me Sheikh Ayn al-Shamri, Hafidhullah Ta'ala one of the ulama uh, in Ha'il Saudi Arabia, I asked him many years ago about the issue about how people, some people are uh, uh, offended or they uh, run from the Dawah of Ahl Sunnah or the Dawah of the Salafis because they always hear them speaking about individuals or speaking about, they hear many of them, their du'at and their imams and their mashayikh speaking about others, other Muslims. Uh, and, and refuting, making refutations. And of course, refutations, Ayyullah Bab, as we've said in countless durus, aside from this dars as well, that this is a part of the religion and this is not the time or place to go deep into that mesala, but go to the books. It's it's in the books. Go to Imam Nanoe's, uh go to Riyadh Salihin, even. You'll find it in the chapter tidy, titles about uh, uh, Ghiba. When it's permissible, and you know, and it, you know, the times when riba, or or if you want to refer to it as backbiting or what have you, when are those times it's permissible, and one of the times is in refuting al bidah. Also, the issue of hajr, of of uh, boycotting. This is also legislated. It's from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Faham of the Salaf al Ummah, the Minhaj of the Salaf al Sadiq, Rahimahullah Jamee. So all of these principles, they're a part of the religion. So when I asked the Shaykh, half of the law Ta'ala, he said a very uh, a profound statement, which was very, uh, very uh, insightful. And he said that the Dawah of the Prophet والسلام, in and of itself, the, Khur, the uh, Quraysh, they felt that it split them and divided them. And you go this, go back to the Sira and you'll see the statements of the Ruz, of Kufr, the Imams of disbelief from amongst the uh, Quraysh, the pagans, where they they said, hey, you know, Muhammad, this Dawah to Tawheed, this calling to the oneness of God to worship your God only, is dividing us. It's dividing father and son, dividing brother and, and brother, and, and etc. That it's causing division between the tribes and the harmony of the society. This is the same claims they made. And in fact, so the Sheikh was making the point that it's implicit in the Dawah to Khair and the Dawah to Tawheed, refuting that which opposes it. So in the Dawah to Tawheed, what opposes Tawheed is shirk, polytheism. And the Dawah to Sunnah, what, what opposes the Sunnah? What's the opposite? Bidah, that which is newly invented matters pertaining to the religious practices and beliefs. Uh, which distort the sunnah, which distort the principles of the religion. And as Imam Baba Hadi said, it was one of the first principles that we took. Uh, Al-Islam al huwa sunnah wa sunnah to al islam That Islam is the sunnah and the sunnah is Islam. So if you have something that is deviating from the sunnah, it's deviating from what? It's deviating from Islam. Not meaning it's de deviating in totality that it takes you out of the fold of Islam. No, because there's other principles and other things that we have to look at in place of whether something is bid'ah mukaffara or bid'ah ghayr mukaffara, as we've mentioned countless times. Bid'ah mukaffara meaning, meaning bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Bid'ah ghayr mukaffara is bid'ah which uh, does not take you out of the fold of Islam. So let's read some of these narrations quickly before the time comes upon us because the Maghrib prayer is steadily approaching. So one of the narrations that our Shaykh, Heaven Allah Ta'ala, 
Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli, Allah Ta'ala, he collected from some of the books of the Salaf, and so this is very nicely put together. وَقَالَ أَيُوبَ أَسَخْتِيَانِ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مَا أَزْدَادْ صَاحِبِ الْبِدَعِ اجْتِهَادٍ إِلَّا أَزْدَادْ مِنْ مِنَ اللَّهِ بُعْدٍ So Imam Ayyub Asakhtiani Rahim Allah Ta'ala said, The person of innovation does not increase in his striving, his ijtihad, except that it makes him further from Allah. Why? Because he's seeking to come closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, but he's doing it the wrong way. You can't celebrate the Prophet's birthday no matter how much you love the Prophet والسلام, thinking that you're doing ibadah. Then you begin to have mixed dancing parties and you begin to make mixed dhikr with women dancing, laughing, crying, singing, uh, considering that this is worship and saying, making dhikr that was not known to the Sahaba and think that this is going to bring you closer to Allah. It's going to bring you further from Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa Ibn Ubayd, it's a very important narration, and maybe we'll stop there. Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala, Ibn. Dhakaraluhu, dhakaruluhu, ennuhu jalasa ila amru Ibn Ubayd. Faja'ahu ya'tadaluhu min thalik. Faqalaluhu, ya bunay, anhaka an zina, wa saraka, wa shirb al-khamr. وَلَئِنْ تَلَقَّى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِهِنَّ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ أَنْ تَلَقَّاهُ بِرَاءِ عَمْرِ وَأَسْحَابَ عَمْرِ Yunus ibn Ubayd, he had a son, Rahimahu Allah Ta'ala, one of the salaf of this ummah, and he died. His name was Yunus ibn Ubayd, ibn Dinar al-Ubaydi, or Ubadi, Abu Ubayd al-Basri. ثقة ثبتت فاضل وراء مات سنة تسعة وثلاثين ومية. so he died in 193 Hijri, and he was a man who known for his his piety, and he was reliable in his narrations, and he resided in Al Basri, so he was in Basra in uh, in Iraq. And he had a son, and it was mentioned to him that his son was sitting with Amr ibn Ubaid. And Amr ibn Ubaid, ayyul ahbab, was one of the ru'us, is well known in history, is one of the main leaders of the Mu'tazila. Uh, so when you're uh, uh, from the ru'us of Ahl Bid'ah, and from the Ru'usa Ahl Bid'ah Mukaffara and, you know, and, and known for a great evil in spreading in the religion, that this is a very dangerous thing. So he was, uh, his son, he heard that his son was sitting with Amr ibn Ubaid and then he uh, excused himself from that and he came to see his father or, uh, yeah, he excused himself and he went to see his father. And he said, Oh, uh, the, the, the uh, Imam, Yunus ibn Ubayd said, Oh, my son, I would prefer that you had committed zina, you know, adultery, or had stolen, or had drank alcohol, then to meet Allah Azza wa Jal, it would be better to meet Allah Azza wa Jal with those things, and it would be more beloved to me than to meet Him with the understanding or the view or the way of the, the, the thinking or the madhab, so to speak, of Amr and his companions. Showing us what? That the Salaf, one of the things we gain from this narration is that the Salaf viewed sinfulness to be less harmful than Bidah.
in religious innovation. And the reason why, because the Sahib Abida, the person who is involved in religious innovation, they don't know they're in innovation most of the time, unless they're a person of Hawa who just follows their desires. But a lot of people, there's a lot of people who are very sincere on following what they're following. They're on what they believe. They believe they're doing the correct form of Dawah. They believe that they're calling people to the correct practices. And they believe it wholeheartedly and they want to come closer to Allah. They're sincere. But they don't have the other condition, the other shart for having our amal accepted. Our deeds are accepted by what? By sincerity to Allah, that it's sincere ibadah only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that it's in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So sahib bidah, they hold on to their innovation because they think they're coming closer to Allah. You criticize them, you invite them to good, they don't want to hear that. Because they think they're doing that which is going to bring them closer to Allah. So they figure that you are calling them to the shaitan, and they're going closer to Allah so the way they feel. That's why it's difficult for them to leave that, because they don't even, they're not even aware. And they can't even hear what you're inviting them to. Whereas the person of Ma'asi, they almost, most of the people amongst the Muslims, and even a lot of times non-Muslims, from your fitrah, you know that you're doing something wrong. And one of the ways you know, according to the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he said in an authentic hadith, is that a person will feel, uh, you know, one of the things that you know that you're doing something wrong is that you hate for the people to find out. So even the people who do extreme sins like uh, that are non-Muslims, they hate for the people to find out about that sin they're doing. If they're a Karamakam Allah, they're someone who swaps wives or they do swingers and all this, they don't want everyone to know that stuff. They keep that they're separate. Or they have a secret inclination to something or whatever the case is, they don't want everyone to know that. And likewise, Ahla Ma'asi, the people who do sins, all of us do sins. Would you like the people to see what you're doing? Absolutely not. Especially for those people who involve themselves in major sins. They don't want people to know that they have a hunger to steal. Or they love for some, you know, to, they're inclined to zina. They're addicted to pornography. They can't do without taking that hit off the pipe. They can't, you know, it, it's hard for them. They love music. They, they secretly listen to it. Whatever the case may be, they don't want the people to know, so they do that by themselves in the home. So Sahib Ma'asi knows they're doing wrong, and there's a chance and a good possibility, bi'ithnillah, that they'll repent. But Sahib Bida, la, they don't know. They're on what they're on, and they keep upon what they're upon. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with tawfiq and ikhlas with the bat and protect us from bid'ah and all kinds of sin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.